In this video, I want to talk about IUPAC or systematic names for alkanes. So I just, you know, in other videos, you saw that we have common names. Now I want to show you the IUPAC names. We said earlier that common names are not really useful for complicated organic compounds, and there is a better method to name those kind of um, larger organic compounds and com more complicated organic compounds. So let's see how you name them. So a group of chemists representing the countries of the world met in 1892 to devise a system for naming compounds that would be simple to use and require a minimum, minimum of memorization and yet be flexible enough to name even the most complicated organic compounds. This was the first meeting of the group that came to be known as the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, abbreviated as IUPAC. I -U P -A -C. The IUPAC rules are accepted throughout the world as a standard method for naming organic compounds. The names that are generated using this system are called IUPAC names or systematic names. Let's see what are the rules for naming based on IUPAC. Rule 1 for naming alkanes in IUPAC system. The first rule of nomenclature gives the base name of the compound. So we need to find the main branch, find the largest continuous chain of carbon atoms and use the name of this chain as the base name of the compound. I need to mention that the definition of substituents, the groups attached to the main chain are called substituents because they are substituted in place of the hydrogen atom on the main chain. So if you see here in this two pictures, we have seven carbon chains, so we can find the largest chain. So the largest chain always used as the main chain, the main group. So here in this case, we have seven carbon chain. But sometimes when we have two possible of them, when there are two long, longest chains of equal length, we need to use the chain with the greater number of substituents as the main chain. So as you see on the left hand side, we have seven carbon chain, but we have only three substituents. And on the right hand side, we have seven carbon atoms in the main chain, and we have four substituents. So the right hand side is the best approach to name them. Rule number two, to give the locations of the substituents, assign a number to each carbon atom on the main chain, number the longest chain beginning with the end of the chain nearest to a substituent. We start the numbering from the end nearest the branch, so the numbers of the substituent carbons will be as low as possible. So as you see here in these two pictures, in the bottom, so we have seven carbon atoms in the right and seven carbon atoms in the left. So which one to choose? Which way should we start? From top to bottom or from bottom to top in this case? So as you see here, in the left hand side, the first substituents you will see it on the third carbon. But on the right hand side, you see you will see that the basically the first substituents will be on uh, second carbon. So the right hand side is the best way to name organic compounds and as you see here we have one two three and four three of them are methyl groups and one of them is ethyl groups so we can call it three ethyl two four and five trimethylheptane so heptane we have seven carbon atoms we have trimethyl because we have three of them on carbon number two, carbon number five, four and carbon number five. And we have three ethyl because we have just one ethyl groups and it comes before methyl, it comes before trimethyl. Why? Because uh, we arrange them alphabetically. E comes before M as you know. Rule number three, name the substituents group attached to the longest chain as alkyl group. Give the location of each alkyl group by the number of the main chain carbon atom to which it is attached. As you see here, we have some alkyl groups. Alkyl groups are named by replacing the A and E suffix of the alkane named with Y 
L. For example, methane becomes methyl, ethane becomes ethyl, propane becomes propyl, butane becomes prop, uh, butyl. So and you, just, you can see the difference here. We have CH4 here in this, on the left hand side and we have CH3 and the bond is in the methyl group. Same thing for ethane, ethane and ethyl, propane and propyl. So we have some others for one carbon, two carbons, three carbons and four carbons. We have methyl group, ethyl group, propyl group, isopropyl group, uh, butyl group, isobutyl group, secondary butyl group and tertiary butyl group. Let me talk about what is secondary and tertiary. The simple branched alkyl groups are usually known by common names. The isopropyl and isobutyl groups have the character characteristic iso grouping as you see here there, is, there are branch so we call them iso grouping the name of the secondary butyl or sec butyl and tertiary butyl or tert butyl or t butyl groups are based on the degree of alkyl substitution of the carbon atom attached to the main chain so let's see what is the difference in terms of uh, primary secondary and tertiary in the Secondary butyl group, the carbon atom bonded to the main chain is secondary or bonded to other two other carbon atoms. In the tertiary butyl group, it is tertiary or bonded to three other carbon atoms. In both the normal butyl group and the isobutyl group, the carbon atom bonded to the main chain are primary bonded to only one other carbon atoms. And as you see here in this slide, you will see the difference. So it's primary, this C is connected only to one branch. For second one, the secondary C is connected to two other branches. So we call it secondary carbon. And C here, it's connected to three branches. So our group or alkyl groups, so that's what we call it a tertiary carbon because it's connected to three of them. So primary it connects to one, secondary connects to two of them, and tertiary connects to three of them. And at the end we have n-butyl group, which is unbranched, so that's the example for a primary. And here for the secondary we have sec-butyl group, secondary. And for tertiary, we have T-butyl group. So as you see, it's connected to three different alkyl groups.